So I think one of the best experiences for me at Columbia, uh, where I could really see that playing out to my sort of certain advantage, was. Hi Akhil, how are you? Yeah, doing well. Yeah. Uh, before we go ahead, I would want to quickly understand your background. You know, this could be also helpful for the viewers. So, uh, I just want to quickly understand wh- which university were you from in India? What course did you do back then? Afterwards, uh, if you have worked, if you have not worked uh, in India, and then how did masters happen? Uh, in which year did you take the call of uh, pursuing masters from the US? So, if you could give us a quick background of yours, that would be helpful. Yeah. So, uh, 2014, uh, uh, I went to VIT to pursue electrical engineering. Uh, the program was called Triple E Electronics, uh, Electrical and Electronics. But I was looking at uh, different programs. Um, uh, with the exception of CS, I could have gone for another field at VIT. But I think I remember seeing, uh, you know, artificial intelligence in the brochure. Like probably something you can sort of learn at VIT. Uh, you know, and you're a young kid, you know. Uh, so I, I knew something about AI that back then. It was not the cool thing, but it was still a thing people talked about. Um, so I was like, oh, I might as well do this. You know, they teach you about AI. That, that sounds cool. Um, so that's why I decided to do Triple E. Um, Triple E is again very focused on physics. So you know, you, you don't go too far uh, from physics. I mean, uh, as a part of your And, uh, undergraduate study. So that was my background. Um, early on, I think my first year at VIT, I sort of realized, you know, I was looking at what people do after VIT, uh, and I saw that a lot of people, you know, um, you know, go for jobs, or you know, some people, you know, go for masters, some people work for a couple of. So, so I saw all, the whole spectrum of that. I mean, that's why college is good. At the alumni, right? You, you see people, you see their trajectories, and you sort of see where do I see myself. You you ask yourself that question. So coming back after year one, I was like, okay, wait, I'm going for masters, and I feel like towards the end, the process is going to get, let's say, very fast. I mean, I'll have to be into if I want a job, I'll be interviewing. You know, if I want to go ahead outside, and so I I just saw the process, what it takes to go out, and I felt like there are a couple of things I can knock out. Uh, even before you know, I have to be for the fourth year, and uh, there are things that I have to work on as I progress to my undergrad, right? Building a profile. So I gave my GRE. Um, I got a 324 at the time, and I said, "Okay, I'm done with the GRE. This is it." Um, and then probably keep on doing what you do, right? So um, then I was involved in some projects in VIT. There was a Mars rover team. Uh, I worked at, I worked at the place uh, for six months to a year. Uh, as I said, uh, sec- at the end of second year, I went to Ayuka to do my summer school master physics. Um, after coming back from Ayuka, that was a very interesting experience. That's where I learned about Python, machine learning, and everything. So, uh, third year basically, I was trying to see where there's my curriculum that I'm supposed to learn, but like where can I learn the stuff that you know, really excites me? And so, probably at that time, you know, I started taking classes or started, you know, you know, going to professors who sort of you know touched realms in those fields, you know, trying to you know. Look for work uh, and like working with them, learning things, challenging myself basically, and that's when I think towards the end of my third year, I got into like uh, you know the online hackathons for machine learning. You know, back then I think there were quite a few free forums, so there's some bit of Kaggling. You know, there's a Kaggle platform and Hacker Earth and all. They started you know launching machine learning challenges. Back then. So you know, I was participating. It was like a it was a good process. I was applying what I was learning. And you know there was a good reward function if you would you know really break you know uh, you know maybe get a position lead or something you know you will feel good about yourself. So that self reinforcement mechanism at the end of my fourth year, I was like okay, I feel good about myself. I think machine learning is something I can pursue. I learn more about right. I've been more applied. Maybe it's time for me to visit fundamentals and maybe I didn't get exposure to that at VIT. So all these things were clear. Now the way you go about achieving that is multiple ways, right? Um, I was still thinking of ways how to apply in astronomy, so I wasn't thinking too much about you know what the career would look like without astronomy. So yeah, that was that was, that was basically it. A lot of like engineering, a lot of applied projects, um, and you know a little bit of interest in astronomy. That was basically me stepping outside of what's actually taught in my course and exposing myself to like new things, learning Python programming at that point, and learning about machine learning. You know, because back then the courses that I know at all these colleges were still not you know teaching. Machine learning or we're not like up to date with what's going on uh, outside. Uh, you are someone who has graduated a couple of years back. I wanted mm-hmm. to understand how uh, soon did you end up getting a job after your graduation, and how mm-hmm. helpful was having the Columbia tag on your CV? 
uh, I did do intern, but uh, I I didn't get like a, a return offer from the place I intern uh, because it was a very selective place. Apparently, they had a rule that if they you know had ten interns, they only select two for the return offer. So I mean that's how that intern program worked. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, but I sort of knew that wasn't gonna happen. I mean, I wasn't too excited about that opportunity either. I was like, okay, I want to explore something else. I tried this. Um, and then probably like the last semester uh, was you know where I was interviewing. I think I had like ten to twelve interviews uh, with like different companies. Uh, went into like final rounds for most of them. Um, uh, at the end, I, I had a couple of offers of them. Um, uh, what sort of struck out to me uh, was that I wanted to try out consulting uh, for a lot of things that were appealing about it. And yeah, that that's. I mean, I had a job offer in like. I was done with my final rounds in October of 2019, and I was supposed to graduate in like December 2019. And I had an offer in November, and so yeah, I mean, even before I graduated, I had an offer. And now, and like I started in Feb 2020, so I took like a two weeks, a uh, two months from the time I, you know, my degree was over, I took two months, and then I started like you know, use that month travel and you know, meet friends that you know, I didn't have time to meet when I was uh, working through Columbia. But to answer your question about how was the Columbia, uh, you know, uh, having a Columbia name on your resume, um, I cannot like answer that question fully. But I can tell you this much, right? Um, when people do come to Columbia or like any Ivy League school or any you know good school that sort of like known for uh, its uh, programs, right, uh, at some ranking that measures it on some scale, what's basically it tells you? I think it's an approximation for. People who have come here before, and people who will come here in the future, right? So these programs are usually like uh, a magnet for like you know high potential individuals who sort of you know take a command for their career. So I think one of the best experiences for me at Columbia, uh, where I could really see that playing out to my sort of certain advantage, was meeting like smart peers, uh, um, alumni, and Columbia did a really awesome job uh, helping us you know understand. How powerful the alumni networks can be, and throughout my three semesters there, I met so many of alumni. Like, I feel like uh, back in undergrad, I mean, there really wasn't that big of uh, you know uh, interaction with alumni base. I mean, probably you know once in three months, someone will come to give like a guest lecture, and that's it. But at Columbia, I mean, uh, one time we're having you know uh, information sessions where people are you know explaining their work for hour and a half, and then you know have like a Hour and a half, you know, interaction session later. You know, they're interested about what you're doing at Columbia. Like, what projects are you working on? What classes are you taking? Sometimes they're joking, but oh, I took the same class, you know, two years ago. And you know, you guys are, you know, connecting on that. Um, there's stuff like um, coffee chats, right? Uh, I met like the head of data science at Cora. You know, Cora was big back then. Uh, at a coffee chat, uh, and he was, you know, just there to meet people. Like his job was like, maybe I'll meet 50 people, maybe I'll find two people that I can really. Pull in uh, to do the kind of work I wanted to do. So even you know, not everything is supposed to be like oh, uh, it's not like going to help you immediately. It sort of like opens up your mind having these conversations and meeting like uh, amazing people as you go along. And yeah, I mean there was so many. I think the I would say the careers department at Columbia. There is a department at Columbia that's called like careers, uh, and their job is basically to expose you. To as many people as you can. I mean, I can see. I'm, I met people from tech. I met people from finance, fintechs, uh, anything you can imagine. I met people from all across, and I could see how their career shaped out to be, or you know how they break in. So I mean, I didn't have any questions as to how to get in to any field I wanted to. It sort of became like, what, where do I see myself? And what sort of fits in for me? I want to uh, very quickly, you know, like in less than a minute, I would say, uh, as a, as a big brother, if you would want to give any advice to any of the potential uh, Columbia candidates from India who could have a possibility of clearing it in the next uh, fall intake, so what would that advice be like? It could be something as small as uh, trying a particular product in the canteen around the university, or it could be something as serious as uh, a couple of things to look out for while pursuing a Particular subject uh, in that course. So, within a minute, very quickly, what would that one advice be from Akhil to all these students? I think uh, Columbia really values uh, your personal story as to why you want to study at Columbia. I feel right. 
I mean, I had my own personal story, but the people I've interacted with, they they have their own story, right? I think most times people feel like they already need to know everything before they come to Colombia. Probably then maybe don't need to come to Colombia. I mean, if you're already an ML expert, right? Um, so the, the idea is where in Colombia can fit in your picture, on your, in your personal story, and I think so. SOP is a big part, right? So my my advice is, it's like, uh, and I see a lot of people making that mistake because I do talk to people who apply, uh, you know. Uh, on some frequency and they sort of you know make it all about their academic achievements and you know their you know it's sort of basically like a, a read of their uh, of the resume right and probably you do all those things probably you try to you know increase your profile but i think in the sop the story is about why why you do what you do and is there a bigger purpose to that and when you come to colombia how do you plan to use the resources that colombia provides sort of help you grow even further right So they want to see a good story, and I would say that uh, avoid that mistake. Right? Don't just make it about your resume. Uh, um, spend some time thinking about why you made all the decisions you made till today, and how will your future unfold. And I think I'll just say one thing. I think the reason I sort of even entertain, uh, you know, you know, meeting with you today is because I personally find a lot of value uh, in your kit as a platform when I'm sort of navigating myself. Um, yeah, I think there's definitely a place for a place like that. Um, you know. Because I think it's the center stage for democratizing knowledge, knowledge sharing, and sort of you know wetting some stuff that I think a lot of the advice and information that flows on the internet can be misleading. I think having having a good platform where bad advice can be weeded out, there's more signal, less noise. I think that's always a help to everyone. So yeah, that's why I decided to meet you today and after. Yeah,